The value of houses in Melbourne have quadrupled in real terms since 1982. In Sydney, they've tripled. Property owners might not have worked for this wealth, but governments know they fiercely defend it. Labor tentatively proposed to take some heat out of the housing market by reducing the benefits of buying investment properties during the 2019 federal election campaign. The idea was thoroughly mocked, even by working class people, some of whom had managed to become property investors themselves. Both major parties now know not to jeopardise the precious gains property owners have made. Both parties could, of course, partially solve this problem by proposing to scrap the absurd policy of enforced superannuation. As former Victorian MP, Liberal MP, Tim Wilson said in his book, The New Social Contract, young people traditionally are focused on buying a house. And as they get older, having paid off the house, they then turn their attention to retirement savings. The compulsory, the compulsory superannuation brought in by then Treasurer Paul Keating in 1991 reversed that. Young people entering the workforce are now forced to deposit part of their wages in accounts that will be locked up for 40 years. The benefits or otherwise of compulsory super could be debated all night, but the upshot here is that money should be, that money should be used instead to buy homes. Politicians pay lip service to this problem as if their paltry offers to tinker at the edges of the home ownership problem will somehow make it easier for young generations to enter the market. They won't, and we all know it. The solution is very simple. Increase supply. Australia is a big country with no shortage of space for young people to buy land and build homes. And we have a can-do culture that's not discouraged by the challenges of turning arid land into functional neighbourhoods. But doing that would increase supply and reduce the value of, exist of existing stock. Politicians know that homeowners who outnumber the renters would never tolerate that. So we're stuck with a generation of young people who are being prevented from buying homes and the inevitable next step, starting a family. The flow on effects for Australia are, are profound. Our national fertility is dropping and we increasingly need to import workers to do basic jobs. And our youth are understandably not as attached to the nation as they would be if they owned a piece of it. Menzies himself called owning a house having, quote, a stake in the country. Recently, the Institute for Public Affairs conducted a survey asking Australians if they would stay and defend the country if it was invaded by a bigger aggressor, as Ukraine, Ukraine recently was, by Russia. Overall, 20% said they would rather flee, which is startling enough. But the younger the respondent, the more likely they were to choose to flee. 38% of those aged 25 to 34, increasing to 40% of those aged 18 to 24. You can see why. You can see why this generation is also vulnerable to globalist organisations like the World Economic Forum. The WEF recently produced an advertisement pro promoting its plan to take over the world's economies. In it, under a photograph of a smiling millennial, was the slogan, you will own nothing and you will be happy. Young Australians would probably think that's pretty tempting. After all, the way things are, they don't own much anyway. 